మగుబూల కుమ్మకాయ ఫోన్ అయితే మరి కురేన్ సున్న ఎవరికి గెస్ట్ ఉన్నాయి కీ ఉడే తీ మేము ఉన్నాయి కీ ఉడుం హమ గెస్ట్ ఉన్నాయి కీ టూరిస్ట్ ఉన్నాయి కీ ఉడుం Mohamed Soli is the owner of a bed and breakfast on Goraydo Island, one of almost 1200 that make up the nation of the Maldives. While the business has earned the first class rating and is popular with tourists from Europe, Mohamed faces a constant threat from the changing climate and encroaching water. On the other side of this island, the situation is even more dire. Accelerating sand erosion has toppled trees and in just four years has shrunk this coastline by about 15 meters. You can see that this tree, it's gone. It's like only now you can see the roots and now actually it gets two years before it was sand like here. And sometimes when the waves come in now, it's come like this. And uh, when, when it is big waves, all houses affected. And the beach is gone. And, and there are so many trees on this beach. And this all gone. This is the grim reality for people and businesses here in the Maldives and the other three atoll nations, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, and Tuvalu. For these countries, their size, geography, and elevation, a little over one meter, make climate change and rising ocean levels an existential threat. Everyone is going to be impacted by climate change, but these four countries are already feeling the effects, and, it's, and these are big impacts that they're already feeling. Those will only get worse over time, and so if they can get some attention for their accelerated adaptation efforts, that's important to do right now. To confront and work on solutions to the issues facing the atoll countries, the Asian Development Bank hosted a high-level conference in Maldives to discuss ways of combating and building resilience against climate change and rising ocean levels. The atoll representatives delivered a clear message that they have a natural right to remain in their islands and not be forcibly relocated due to climate change. There's no plan B. We are not moving uh, away from our island. Um, we are here to stay. Migrating to a foreign land is not an option for us. We as a people, we are determined to stay here. They were also clear on the need to accelerate adaptation and build resilience if they are to protect and ultimately save their countries. We need to really think um, beyond just the projects and think long-term, what is our long-term plan uh, for resilience? Um, not project by project actually, but resilience that translates to survival in our country and continued existence in our country. We are in an emergency situation. We are on, on a more or less on a tipping point in terms of uh, you know, where we live. So the day-to-day the -day living conditions of the people is, uh, is very much at stake. The conference brought experts from around the world who outlined how the development and global community can help the Atwal countries. Given the urgency and given the scale of the problems, you need to build political will at the highest levels as well as government levels, as well as with the public. So I include the public in that political will building. And then you need to unlock the resources. It does require investment to get us from a situation where the oceans are in decline in crisis to one where it's a sustainable situation where these communities have a future. The Atolls agreed on a set of priorities, including the need to work more closely to raise awareness under exceptional circumstances and to accelerate adaptation and resilience planning and investments. They also discussed continued collaboration with ADB, which is already spearheading a range of actions to help the Atoll countries. ADB has committed $5 billion to an action plan for healthy oceans, focusing on sustainable tourism and fisheries, protecting marine ecosystems, cutting down on pollution, and sustainable coastal infrastructure. ADB is also investing heavily in climate change adaptation projects such as water supplies, sanitation, flood control, and transport and energy infrastructure. But all here agree the most effective solution will only come from a united global partnership. For Mohamed Zoli and the people on Goraydo Island, the action needs to happen now.